Welcome to Heretics Against Heresy, the podcast where we hope to inspire you and create faithful students of the word, sharing what we learn along the way. I'm Ken, along with my daughter, Sabrina. Sabrina, you want to tell us the audience a little bit about us? Yeah, we are not lifelong Christians. We only started going to a church regularly in 2019. Before then, we only went on Christmas and only Christmas, not even Easter. Not even Easter. Yeah. We are students of the Bible. We try to go deeper into God's word and not accept just what is taught on your Sunday and to truly understand the uh, principles and the Bible. Uh, we are a father and daughter, and we want to talk a bit about who kind of inspired us to do this. So, Dad, what do you? who's the first person you want to talk about? The first person is uh, Chuck Missler. So uh, the late, great Chuck Missler, uh, his Learn the Bible in 24 Hours series is fantastic. A lot of, lot of stuff packed in there. I don't necessarily agree with everything the people that have uh, inspired me says or, or their conclusions they've come to, but his, studi- his studious ability to dig into the Word and find things and, and make connections that uh, I didn't see before is just uh, the first one. Um, the second one, I think, is also Dr. Michael Heiser, again, late Dr. Michael Heiser with his book, The Unseen Realm, and listening to his Naked Bible podcast, just, again, making connections and challenging the boundaries or the things that have been taught in, in uh, church theology and make you think twice about it. And, uh, and I think the third person I'd highlight is uh, Joel Richardson as part of the FAI, FAI team, because he explores all sides of the argument and gives you the you know, what he sees on both sides. And Sabrina, what about yourself? I know we have some crossover in the first one, but do you want to you talk? Yeah, the first one I want to talk about is Mike Winger. He was the first podcast I ever started listening to, and he's the first Bible podcast I started listening to. Um, he's a bit, I would say, like Joel Richardson. He really takes the time to dig in and research all sides of an argument. He is currently uh, working on finishing up a series on women in ministry that has been a very long and exhaustive series. I know some of his videos are, I think, over... or eight hours on one of the topics that he did. Um, I really like how he explores all sides of the topic and really takes the time to research and understand to make sure he's not just accepting an opinion because he reads an article that shares a good defense for it. Um, Next person I want to talk about is uh, Melissa Doherty. She is um, kind of a Christian apologist and did one about Christian music and dangers and flaws in some current Christian music. And I find it interesting that she doesn't just um, take things that are Christian, but she makes sure that the things that are Christian that she talks about, they're truly uh, with biblical principles. She doesn't just accept it, like, if, just because it has the label of Christian on it. Right, and I think you're you're drawn to her also because of your being on a praise team and, and being into the, uh, you know, worship music. So I think it, it was another attachment there that probably helped you a lot. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. So... You know, why, why do we come up with the name heretics? So um, let's start with the first definition here. What is what is heresy? Well, Webster tells us it's an adherence to religious opinion, contrary to dogma, denial of truth, um, and not heresy because the church deems it so, even though that is a, a term that is thrown around a lot. Um, and dogma, just to define that, is it's something that's held in established opinion. So a lot of times, whenever you don't agree with, you know, something your church, your denomination tells you, you know, that label gets uh, let's put on top of you. But Sabrina, you've also got a, a side to this, right? Yes, definitely. So um, about a year ago, uh, right before the summer, my youth group, I asked a question because we were doing kind of a QA and a session, uh, kind of what it really means to be saved. And at what point um, does like a habitual sin affect your salvation? So this our, our uh, discussion sort of turned into a discussion of can you lose your salvation? At the time, I personally said I don't I think you can lose salvation and my youth leader was kind of against it there was a small like discussion there it wasn't really a huge argument because I didn't really know enough about the topic so that summer uh, I really went on a, a search for to find the truth about this so I went through the Bible I looked up a ton of passages about uh, salvation and I looked up cross references and then I like looked over all my passages I looked at pos- I thought about ways to refute it and then I went and I researched what people had to say about it for that and- summer in that study, right, we encourage you to make sure that you're looking at the pro and con arguments, both sides, line them up, see how Scripture connects Scripture. So you, you took to becoming a student in that sense and not just finding arguments that support one side or the other. You really looked at both. Correct. I came into this. I didn't really want to have an opinion. I didn't really have an opinion on either side. I was 
I thought it was a certain way. That way made sense to me. But I also knew from my discussion previously with during youth group that not everyone holds that opinion, that there are scholars to back up this opinion that I disagreed with. So I definitely wanted to make sure I researched it thoroughly. Now, this is not an exhaustive study. Like you can spend years, I think, studying just this issue alone because there's a lot of things wrapped up in, up in this problem, like predestination and um, things like baptism. And that's something that you can spend a lot of time researching, which I did not necessarily do. But I did come to the conclusion that you can lose salvation through my study, but I continue to try and learn and make sure I don't become closed-minded about this belief. Well, I think there are certain passages, right, that we know the ones that say, you know, how you're sealed, but there's other ones that were challenging in terms of running the race to the end that, you know, I think are still open switches and trying to, you know, connect those dots you never really got you know, I'd say satisfactory answers to, uh, to to quench your thirst. And, you know, we have different different Christian denominations believe these different things. So, again, it's opening your eyes to the the, the greater word that's out there and, and maybe not just settling into one thing and, and continuing to be open to learning. And you might even change your mind in, a, you know, the next study you do. Yeah, so. correct. And so after that summer that I was doing my research, uh, we do, he does a youth lesson, my youth leader, about, um kind of tied up in um, saying that you you cannot lose salvation. I challenged him having my research with me. And um, he kind of, that time it got brushed off kind of as we're Southern Baptists, this is what we believe. So I was a little frustrated that my opinions weren't um, being listened to and that my arguments weren't really being held. They were just kind of brushed off. But I was like, oh, well, whatever. But the next week um, we come in and um, the entire lesson is basically we're talking about why we um, cannot lose salvation. So uh, at this point, unfortunately, the discussion did get heated because we were there for close to 45 minutes talking about this. And unfortunately, it did escalate into a, a bit of an argument. Um, I admit that I was wrong with some of my conduct during that argument, but um, I did believe in this and I did not want to back down from this argument that I had been researching well, this. It's not, this. It's not necessarily backing down, right? It's It's nothing that was presented changed your mind is all stuff you'd seen and, and had thoughts about. It wasn't like, oh, I didn't think about that or any new evidence, right? So it was, it was stuff you'd already done research on. Correct. And I also feel that I felt that none of my arguments were really being listened to when I brought stuff up. And um, it was also a blessing that I happened to have my notebook with all my Bible passages in it for that youth lesson because I was supposed to be doing a devotion. So that was definitely a blessing from God, I think, about um, defending my viewpoint. And so dad has a kind of the back half of the story about the heretic part where that comes in. Yeah. And, and I think part of it, though, right, that's really what launched you to really start studying. Yeah, definitely. And not just this subject, every subject. I mean, the stuff you're doing, diagramming things in the Psalms and it just spurred you to really be a student of the Bible. And I think, you know, again, it whether you're, you're where you settle out in the future and how your theology evolves as you learn, right? It shows you that, you know, God uses something like this to, to make you a better student and, and, and get you deeper into the word. So it's fantastic. Um, and, you know, so you were going to do a podcast. You started researching it, right? Right. Yes. Um, I started researching it and I got like a ton of books from the library. I researched it online and I kind of got way too overwhelmed with all the things I was trying to think about. So, um, I kind of just gave up, said, I can't do this. There's no way. And I just kind of put it aside for a while. And then, you know, kind of subsequent to that, I, uh, we had a, we had a change of pastors. So we were looking to fill the pulpit on some Sundays. You know, I stuck my hand up. I was given something that uh, the Lord gave to me as a, as an idea for a sermon. Uh, We're going to talk about that in a future episode, but after that, I had a lot of feedback and some people said, hey, you know, I think I don't think it's the last time you're preaching. And I felt like, well, I'm not I don't feel I'm called to be a pastor, so not likely to be in front of a, in a pulpit again. But I did feel like, you know, the whole idea of, you know, researching a topic and, and putting a message out about it was strong. So someone said, hey, why don't you do a podcast? And then, you know, I kind of thought about that and then rem- remembered Sabrina was talking about it. So, you know, and I think it was my wife and. Her mom said, hey, you know, why don't you guys do something together? And, you know, so that's where this was born. So the where she where she ended, it, we just kind of picked up and f- completed the research and, and started down this path. So that's 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 how we got here. But, you know, Sabrina, do you want to talk about right, the motivation to to learn and test things? Yeah, I want to talk about the Bereans, which come from Acts 1711, which says, um, 
Now these Jews were no, more noble than those in Thessalonica. They received the word with all eagerness, examining the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. Now these things that they're receiving are the Paul's preaching, basically. And these Bereans, though I'm sure they heard about Paul and all his preaching and the stuff that happened to him, like I'm pretty sure the Damascus Road experience probably was spread around quite a bit, especially by this chapter in the book of Acts. But yeah, even though they've heard about this guy, Paul, he's kind of, I think, the equivalent of some of our celebrity preachers today, except he actually suffered and like did hard stuff for Jesus, but right. which is a big if. The Rolls Royce didn't drop him off at the front door of the, the, the seminary. Yeah, yeah correct. correct. Um, but they did not accept what he said. They were making sure to test it against the Old Testament scriptures to ch- check to make sure that what he was saying aligned. And I think this is a really great thing for us to sort of try to do in our own lives and to see when we see that Bible verse that someone puts out on social media or something to be, is that in context? Is that really what that says? Like these people that put for, uh, Philippians 4.13 out, like when they're doing, want to do anything, like that's not what that means. These The Bereans were testing the um, words of Paul against the rest of the Bible and the rest of the context of scripture. And I think as Christians, that's definitely something that we need to be able to do. And it also says that they were... Um, in the word daily, the scriptures daily, examining the scriptures daily. And I think that is very important. And if we want to be able to understand the Bible, and if we want to be able to challenge the incorrect teachings, we need to be able to be in the word daily. And I think we can learn quite a bit from this short verse in Acts about our lives of reading the Bible. Yeah, and I I think it's too easy to take one verse and, you know, build an entire movement around it or use it out of context. And so the whole idea of Context, 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 but also when you read something, whether it's in an article that refers back to a verse, you know, go back and make sure that it's it's telling you the right thing. Because when I first started reading stuff and, you know, people would quote scripture and you look at it and say, well, that's that's not what that passage means. They're, they're, they're trying to support an argument with stuff that, you know, it, it's not even fitting up to what they're saying. So, you know, it, it got me early on to make sure that I look at, you know, what people are saying. And so... You know, our goal is to share kind of what we learn as we go through this, to become better students of the word. And, you know, we really feel it, you know, you don't have to be, a, you don't have to have a master's in divinity. Um, you know, you can read and, and understand for yourself, write down your questions, prayerfully consider them, they'll get answered and then continue to grow in your own knowledge, right? I mean, there's 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 plenty in there and it's it's meant for us to read and understand. So we hope as we go through this, you'll, uh, you'll learn with us and, and learn from us. So Sabrina, any closing thoughts? Yeah, I just I think I want to close on thinking that the people behind these opinions are still human. Like we should not be putting down the people that hold an opinion that we have tested and we don't necessarily think is correct. We shouldn't be trying to um, just take them down because they have a bad opinion. I think we have to remember we're all human. We're all going to make mistakes in our theology. I don't think anyone probably other than maybe like Jesus and some of the like apostles had perfect theology. Like even Peter mess like wanted to. Uh, like circumcise the Gentiles and they uh, join the church. So like, I don't really think many it's possible, especially now in our modern age to have perfect theology. And I think we have to remember that when we are um, approaching people who we don't necessarily agree with, we need to make sure that we're, we speak the truth and we should always speak the truth, but we need to make sure we do that with love. And because that's ultimately um, what Jesus tells us to do with the greatest commandment, love God and then love people basically. Well said to summarize it. We thank you for spending some little bit of time with us. And, uh, you know, on our next one, we'll be uh, getting into some subjects. And uh, But this is who we are and why we're doing this. Thanks for joining us.